Well, tēnā koutou katoa, welcome all, kūrāna tātou katoa toa, and um, thank you again as always for turning up at this uh, fine establishment. So we're here today to talk about the Financial Stability Report, and I'll just make uh, a, a couple of comments in advance. As always, I'm very pleased to be here with the Deputy Governor, Jeff Baskan, and Head of Financial Stability, and with Chris Bloor, who is uh, the wise man in the room who's been in large part responsible for pulling this document together, along with many other people at the bank, many of whom are with us in the audience this morning. So first up, I just want to say that the risks to New Zealand's financial system have eased over the past six months, but the vulnerabilities still remain. Uh, in particular, households remain exposed to financial shocks, in large part due to the mortgage debt that they hold. Uh, however, pleasingly, both mortgage credit growth and house price inflation have eased to more sustainable rates, and this has reduced the riskiness of new bank lending to housing. In response, uh, we are easing our loan-to-value ratio, the LBR, restrictions on banks' new mortgage lending. Uh, if banks' lending standards are maintained um, where they have been over recent months, then further easing in the LVR could be possible over the coming next few years. Debt levels do remain high, however, in the agricultural sector, particularly for dairy farms, uh, and that implies ongoing exposure to financial vulnerabilities. Balance sheets do need to be strengthened further, uh, and in particular, given um, the likely investments needed in the medium term with some of the challenges coming for agriculture in particular, as represented through climate change, investment will be needed. While domestic financial risks have eased, uh, global financial vulnerability has risen. We have signif significant build-up uh, in debts and, uh, and asset prices, and the ongoing geopolitical tensions and uh, trade challenges overhang financial markets. This vulnerability is highlighted by the current elevated volatility in equity and debt market pricing at present, and, uh, and that will be on a watching brief. We are pleased that New Zealand's uh, bank exposures have reduced somewhat to these global risks, and in large part that is because of the smaller or lower reliance we have on foreign funding and short-term debt funding in the banking system. The domestic banking system remains sound at present, uh, and we are using this period of relative calm to assess whether the banking system has sufficient capital to weather future extreme shocks. Um, our view at present, which we'll be making public mid-December for final consultation, is that higher capital requirements are necessary across the banking system so that they are sufficiently resilient to extreme shocks. And we expect to uh, have a full consultation over coming months to finalise the capital requirements for the banking system. The banking system remains profitable, which is a good thing. Uh, we like profitable banks and we like well-capitalised banks. Uh, while positive overall, some of the bank's profitability has been driven through the low costs and we believe partly achieved through some underinvestment in core infrastructure and risk management frameworks. And this is what we talked about uh, and jointly with the FMA from some of our findings through the Bank Conduct and Culture Review recently discussed. As we've made public, we will be reviewing again banks' responses to our Conduct and Culture Review in March 2019 and seeing what individual action, if any, we need to take from there. As is well known, CBL Insurance was placed into full liquidation by the High Court uh, on the 12th of November. Aside from CBL, the insurance sector as a whole is meeting its minimum capital requirements. However, the capital strength has declined and a number of insurances, insurance companies are operating with what we'd call a small buffer relative to the minimum capital or solvency requirements. The insurance industry must ensure it has sufficient capital to remain solvent in all business conditions. And we are currently uh, undertaking, again with the FMA, our review of the insurance uh, um, industry's conduct and culture review, and I believe that will help illuminate um, issues that we need to talk with insurance companies around adequate solvency and risk management. 
that's uh, the formal uh, introduction, so we are open for questions. Our purchase, our leverage is over, is over uh, bank lending standards. Where they then lend to is up to the banks, and obviously the, uh, the growth that we've seen in bank lending has been to the housing sector, has been to mortgage debt, and in part that is underlying uh, a lot of the house price inflation. A big concern that we have, of course, is during uh, following very rapid elevated price increases in, in any asset, uh, there's a likely expectation you can see the reverse happening. And that is what leads to economic loss and distress throughout. So we are pleased to see that house price inflation in aggregate has eased more towards uh, something low and, and at least consistent with income growth. Um, how do you expect the loosening of LVRs to affect the mix of bank lending to investors versus first home buyers and other owner occupier buyers? First home buyers have had uh, are getting very good access to the higher LVR loans, meaning that banks are thinking hard about the allocation of loans and first home buyers obviously are very often the ones with the highest mortgage requirements. So they're getting a very good proportion of it. Uh, we expect in aggregate that um, banks will do what they did last time, which is use as much as they can subject to some buffers they've been putting in for themselves, all of their new lending capacity if they're able to get it out the door. Around the investor side, I mean, restrictions, you know, they have come off a little bit, but they, they remain tight. Yes, yeah, so at the moment, around about two-thirds of high LBR lending is going to first-home buyers, and we'd probably expect that that will continue as we ease the policy. So at the moment, around about a third of first-home buyers are getting um, high LBR mortgages, and we think they could probably rise to, you know, maybe 45% or so with this easing in policy. So there is a significant share of high LBR lending going to that first home buyer segment? What we've been doing is a thorough review on a risk basis for New Zealand around what is the minimum and then what are buffers that make it better for the risk um, that New Zealand banks face. And so a very specific um, challenge there. Now there is no science to this so we've been calibrating it to where we have sufficient capital where the banking system is both sound through many economic conditions as well as efficient. So we're finding that optimal, that sweet spot I would say and the sweet spot is north of where bank capital has currently been. I think the simplest way of talking about it for New Zealand is if our monetary conditions suddenly dramatically changed based on something that did not originate from New Zealand. And this is what is happening around in some parts of the world at the moment. For example, emerging market countries are finding much higher borrowing costs, tighter financial conditions at the time when they actually want looser conditions. Because money is flowing back into the US uh, for some obvious reasons, being higher interest rates in the US as they're starting to tighten, and less obvious reasons, a sense of flight to quality in case something bad happens. And that is probably the number one transmission mechanism for New Zealand. We have a financial shock unrelated to anything happening here. The second parts are the ones we read about more often, which is the direct trade issues and so on and so forth. Uh, personally, I'm less concerned about that. They can be damaging, but they're more slow moving. We can see those happening and businesses will be having to adjust. At the moment, we are one of the least directly affected um, trading nations uh, to the US-China trade discussions because a lot of our products are quite frankly quite basic products that aren't going into value added chains, so they're end either consumed directly or into, or into domestic construction. It's the financial shocks that can, um, that can lead to the unanticipated, particularly if you've got high leveraged uh, uh, households and farming sectors.